hi guys this is episode three and today i'm gonna narrate to you my story how i prepared myself and which kind of documents did i prepare then my journey to kenya so guys uh let me start with the kinds of documents first of all uh when i was selected i was given a first notification and uh, it this whole process took me two years like to going from uh, from entry to to the interview and coming to america it took me two years first of all uh, let me talk about the kinds of documents the list of documents is there is a passport i used the uh, east african passport ugandan east african passport passport photos american size those physical photos i took like 20 of them then the marriage certificate then the vaccination uh cards uh if i'm to talk about in broad about the vaccination cards that is the immunization card from your childhood like my measles polio those ones then uh then i talk about the talk about the yellow fever card and the uh, hepatitis b then the covid certificate then uh there is a police letter i car i i i had to get one from uae where i had been working then one from uganda education certificate i use senior six the birth certificate for my baby mine and my wife first notification letter second notification letter affidavit of support and uh, tax return forms ds260 a copy of ds260 i had to carry that i had to carry a physical copy printed out copy of ds260 then then property title and bank account statement so guys those were some of the documents if i forgot any if i left out any kind of document so so how did it go on it started with a first notification then preparations so after after being selected i had to marry first of all that's why i talked about the marriage certificate the marriage part was hard because it, it needed more time and since i married that's the reason why i submitted in my ds360 at a later date in the year i submitted it in august and that's the reason my interview was delayed my interview was delayed because i submitted my ds260 a later date in the year since from may when i received my first notification when i was selected it took me like three to four months to submit in my ds260 because I had to get documents like birth certificate, I had to get ma that marriage certificate, it was the most important one. Uh, since I had, I had been... So it's not easy to narrate the whole story like because it's, 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 it's involved, uh, there's a lot of things involved in this kind of process but I want to make this story very short and detailed so the kind of things I want to talk about let me talk about from the time I received my first NL to the time I went for the interview first of all I received my first NL when I received my first NL I was happy then it was time to look for documents First of all, I wasn't married. I had applied as single. 
So when I received my first NLI, I had to marry my wife, my girlfriend. Since we had a baby boy together, it was uh, the evidence. It was one of the evidence to show to the consulate that it was a genuine marriage. So what did I do? I went on. I married my wife. Uh, the marriage, uh, the marriage part, led me to delay my DS260 submission. So, what do I mean? I submitted my DS260 after three months, and that's why my visa interview was delayed. So. This is the way it happened. So after getting my first NL and I went on with the marriage, it took me three months. And after three months, we got that physical URSB certificate from the government. Then I went on to submit my DS-260. But with, within the process of the marriage, I had to get the passports for my child, my wife the birth certificate and all those kind of documents i've just mentioned so the only good thing i knew about the whole process of diverse visa lottery that is the only best thing which i had known so i went on after receiving that uh, marriage certificate i submitted my ds260 i did a few of unlocking and those also attributed to the delay of my visa appointment why did i do the unlocking of the ds260 i did it i did it like three times you know i always regretted why did i do the reasons why i did those unlocking i regretted but the only reason i can give is because of money I needed funds. You know, I used to look at into things like, will I get the visa money for my wife and my child? So sometimes I'll be like, I'm not going with them. But at the end of the day, when I get the money, I'm like, I'm taking them. So I used to unlock and, and send to the KCC. Then again, I asked for unlocking. Then I to correct that part of taking my wife and my child. So I, I did it like three times. Man. But it it's the reason why my visa was delayed. You can imagine, I my case number was around 8K, uh, but I did my interview towards the end of the fiscal year. Like in September 1st, that's when I did my interview when it's 19 days to closure. Sometimes I would regret why I, or the reasons why I unlocked, but the, the, uh, it's because I had conflict, conflicting reasons and in my mind was, will I be able to take them? Will I be able to get the funds? Should I add them? Should I not add them? Should I take them later when I go to America? Man. It was hard. So, after married and submitting my DS-260, I waited for like a year to get an interview because I submitted my document in August. In August. So I waited from August 2021, August, September, November, December, January of 2022, February, March, April, May, June. Then in July, I received, in July 2022, I received the second notification. It was one of the happiest moments in my life since I had struggled for over four years with diversity visa lottery program. So when I received it, I had to make sure I, I, I had to organize like the funds. I had to look for money for documents which I had not had. 
I had to look for ways to go to Kenya for the medicals. So what did I do? I started with the medicals. I went on, I sent an, an email to the IOM. I sent them an email. I included my first NL, my passport. I included the way they wanted. So they replied to me that I'll be doing my medicals towards my interview. But in most cases, they don't reply uh, as in eminently, like immediately. They don't reply immediately. So sometimes you are having conflicting minds. Uh, to resolve that, I called them and they were able to reach me, to reach back to me like they, were, they told me, don't worry, your, your, your medicals will be done. Just don't worry, don't rush into things, don't worry. Because they had received all the kind of information they needed. So they were like, just give us some time, we are going to be scheduling your, your medicals. You know those guys handle med international medicals, like they handle for different embassies, for Canada, for whoever, for the region. They were handle for Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, Burundi, Sudan. They handle for so many countries, so they are always busy. So what I did, I was patient. I was I was patient for some time, but uh, when w towards the towards my interview, I was like, no, I'm left with two weeks to my interview date. It was like it was coming to the end of August, end of August, and I was I had run out of patience. I called back to this IOM. I called back to them. Sometimes they could not receive my calls. So I was like, I'm going to Kenya. Since I have an interview in the upcoming week, let me go to Kenya so I can physically approach this uh, IOM and I ask them about my medical appointment. But later in the day, as I was organizing myself to go to Kenya, I received an email uh, informing me that uh, the upcoming week I have an appointment scheduled for me and my family. And the kinds of information, the kinds of document they need me to go with and how much do they need for the medicals. So I was happy later in the day and uh, I organized myself, my wife and my child. The next day we took a bus. You know, we took a bus. Uh, one of the interesting part I want to tell you guys is that when you're going to Kenya, just you have to keep on your mind a lot of things because you're traveling, you're going to Kenya. You don't know anyone there. So for me, what I did, I, I, I called my brother. I reached to my brothers and I asked him to help me with anyone in Kenya. So I got a few contacts in Kenya. Uh, they got me a place where to stay close to the, close to the center where the, the embassy and the IOM is located so it was like a couple of minutes away I, I had to take a cab to reach there so what I did I reached to to that person who was connected with me like uh, the one who will organize where I'm gonna be sleeping with my my family members and I talked to this person we just he uh, he gave me his commitment and uh, we talked about how much we're gonna be spending for the accommodation for the transportation we talked a lot of stuff and true through Kenya uh, the accommodation were nice 
true. So what did that, what happened is after scheduling that uh, medical appointment and uh, later in the day uh, organizing to go to Kenya, what happened? Uh, traveling to Kenya, I used mass cool and mass power and. Uh, I traveled very well. That bus is good. I traveled very well. Uh, actually, it was a few other f selectives who told me about mass school and mass power and where to board from and how much it could be taking. Since it was my first journey to Kenya, my first time going to Kenya, I had to make a little bit of consultation from the same a group which I, I was in, like the DV Lottery group, DV 2020. I had a few Ugandan friends who had already went for, to Kenya for medicals. So they are taking me through the whole process. That's how I got familiar to IOM and how the process works. But if you don't know the process, if you don't have anyone to take you through the process, man, it's hard. You will forever be like contradicting, conflicting with the process. So, how much did I pay when I reached there? I'll be telling you about this, uh, about the visa fee and the uh, vaccination fee. So I organized myself, uh, it was like three days to the medicals, that's when we set off to go to Kenya. And going to Kenya it took us one day. So when we reached there, it took us one day. Then the next day we had to go for medicals. Let me tell you a bit, a little bit about the 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 border, how we entered Kenya, and the, the scenarios which happened there. First of all, I used my passport and my child passport at the border entering Kenya, and asked us the reasons why we we're going there. We mentioned. DV lottery, we mentioned we have an interview. The, you know those people at the border, they like asking in depth. First of all, they have a part for Uganda and a part for Kenya. So when we reached the part for Uganda, they were like, but in Uganda there's American embers, why don't you go there? We told them this, this, this is handled by Kenyan American embassy, it's not Uganda embassy. So they are like, okay, they, they, they passed us to the Kenyan side. The Kenyan side, uh, they, all, they also needed a couple of documents which we provided. Then they let, it, they let us inside. Uh, after that, we continued our journey to Nairobi. Kenya looks wholesome. I loved Kenya, I loved my journey. Uh, much cool and much power were uh, the best thing could have ever happened in my journey. You know, when you don't take a flight and you take a bus, it's a long, long journey, but the, the, the driver and the bus was in good shape, so I did not have any issue on my journey, like, like uh, the bus did not have any issue. So we reached, we reached. Kenya, Nairobi, it was a wholesome city. I contacted that guy who, who was to provide accommodation for me. They, he sent me a Uber from the tax place, like the bus station. Uh, at the bus station, we bought some eats. Kenyan's food was kind of different from you, Ugandan food, but we, we we got something to eat so after that we went to the accommodations and uh, the accommodation we are pretty wholesome it was airbnb it was wholesome we had good time there uh so the next day uh it was uh, we we lived in kenya for one day then the next day it was time for medicals so guys i'm um, gonna be taking you through the medicals how it was and how after the medicals how long did we wait for the interviews 
since we never went back to Uganda, it was only a, a week difference. It was a week to our to our interview. So we never went back to Uganda. So how was the medicals? Ah, medicals. It was interesting. Uh, it was we. Uh, it was a day like Monday. We set off very early very early in the morning since the the medicals we are scheduled it it had to start by 6 30 we had to be there so by 5 a.m by 5 a.m in the morning we took off we reached at the medicals that is iom in kenya so when we reached there we found a long queue of individuals, selectees. So we reached there, we, we interacted, we, uh, it was fun. It was fun, like, you know, the whole process, it was fun. We met few interesting individuals, our fellow selectees, we interacted. Then the security part of it was also nice. In Kenya so the security was nice and cooperating and also they used to advise us accordingly so after after an hour we went in we were we went in the first counter was where you present your documents and and after it was payment time so we presented our documents they we went in we presented our documents then they first took our photos for the system they took our physical photos like you sit there they take your photo they took mine they took for my wife they took for my child then we went for the documents they we they took us through the document they checked our documents then they told us to go and pay. Paying is interesting because you pay in uh, MP, you can you can go and uh, pay. You have to have cash. You pay in Kenyan money or dollars. Individually, you can pay from two two hundred to three three hundred dollars. But we did not pay much since we had most of the documents. We did not pay that much. Yeah, we didn't pay that much. We paid around 240, 230, 200 dollars. Then we went on for scanning, x-ray, blood check, seeing the physician. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we at the end of it all, we started from 5 a.m. until 6 p.m. You spend, uh, literally, you spend the whole day in inside the facility, like going here, going there, going do this, do that, go for to another building for checkup. Yeah, let your wife go for a scan. They sometimes they have to scan if they have to also make. Uh, they have to check if your wife is pregnant. They have to check. They have to check all that like to give the embassy a picture of the kinds of people who are going to america like they have to know each and every detail like are you hiv positive it doesn't mean hiv is a it's a big deal but they just want to know are you taking drugs are you smoking do you have any heart problem do you have any anything they make uh, like a study, like a general uh, medication check to all individuals who are going to be traveling to America. You have to give your medical result to the embassy. Then that embassy, in most cases, I would say TB is the only big issue. If you have TB, man, you cannot travel with TB to America. TB is a very Generally, TB is an issue. 
So our medicals went well. We did not have any issue. So we are told our results will be sent to the embassy. But remember, it was one week away from our interview. So I was like, guys, make sure you send those documents because we need to do our interviews in that week. We don't want anything to come up. They said, however much you could be having your interview the next day, that we know, we know what to do and uh, the, uh, we know what to do and the embassy will always get your medical results in time. So I was happy, we went home, we finished our medicals, we went home, we are so happy, but though we are so tired, we are so tired. The only measure, the only issue we got in Kenya, the mosquitoes are so tough. Kenyan mosquitoes, oh my God. We we had not carried the mosquito net and when we reached there, there were, there were no, we did not have a mosquito net and we are not prepared like for the mosquitoes, man. The mosquitoes were so harsh. Kenyan mosquitoes, they are so harsh. But what we did, we used to like hunt them like in the room and kill them. That, that one helped us to reduce on the number of mosquitoes in our room. So what did we do after the medicals? After the medicals, we had fun. We spent, we spent like we are on vacation. We spent time in Kenya. We used to go visit places. We used to to move around our area where we had stayed for like five days. Then after the five days, it was time for the interviews. Uh, before the interviews, if I'm to talk about the documents which they need at the IOM, like which which kind of uh, vaccination do they do they look at? You know, the number of vaccination you did know you don't have is the the is is it it will rise if you don't have uh, many vaccinations it will rise the amount you will be paying. But for us, we had most of the vaccinations. They look at TB. They look at polio. They look at. They look at uh, hepatitis B, they look at uh, flu, uh, they look at uh, COVID. They look at all those kind of vaccinations for, the, for the, the ones you take when you're still young. There is nothing new. I mean, they look at it. If you don't have it, they have to give it to you. So that's why I advise you guys, if you don't have any vaccination, you, ju you just get the document or go and get it. Because they just need a document showing that you took that document, that vac that immunization when you are still young. If you are not immunized when you are still young, they have to immunize you <laughs> that day. <laughs> and it will be tough for you, you know, getting immunized like when you're big, like giving you like five Im immunization in a day. It's harsh, it's not, you cannot just take it for granted, you know, it's, it's harsh, it's not good for your body, but they have to give it to you because they have to make sure you're immunized according to the USA government. So, so, so after that, after my interview, after my medicals, how was my interview? What happened at my interview? How did I prepare myself for the interview? Man, I'll be telling you that in the next episode. So guys, thank you for watching my episode. This was number three episode. Watch out for four and five episodes. When I will be talking about my day, how did my day go, go on? How did we reach the embassy what was the kind of questions which we were asked why the consular smiled at my wife at my baby what was my baby doing at the interview how did we know that we are approved and what was the tough questions which we faced 
how long did the interview go on so guys i'll be talking that in my next episode that will be number four these are called episode one two three four five first episode done second episode done this is the third episode wait for the fourth episode thank you for watching guys massachusetts new england usa that's my location thank you guys bye bye